There hasn't been a new asset class since the bond market was created in 1693. Well, now there's a new one, and it is the digital asset space. The question is, are you participating? Hey, what's going on, guys? It's the Crypto Siege with another day in the life, in the crazy life that is the digital asset space. Good morning. Happy Monday to you. So, like, I, I woke up this morning and um, I was uh, preparing for, to do this video, and uh, I came across Crypto Eddie's video this morning. I checked hers out. I think I was listening like 15 or 16 minutes of that. And I think it was about 20 minutes long. And um, I saw her tweet, right? It's just so very, very interesting. I saw her tweet um, yesterday, maybe it was yesterday, and she posted a tweet for clarity about um, the quarter settler, R3's quarter settler. I always say quarter instead of quarter. <laughs> uh, settler, right? And um, I read the tweet. I mean, I found it interesting. I mean, she was really... Uh, you know, wanting to clear up some misinformation, right? And so, uh, I she's great for that, right? And and I think it's I think it's always important um, to get the information. Uh, what's the word? To have the right information out there, right? It can be damaging. Now, listen, the vast majority of us, and I'm sure myself included, when we speak R uh, R three quarter settler, we talk um, XRP. We say it's the only digital asset that settles. It just that's currently on the platform to settle, right? In settlement, right? So I think a lot of people uh, in the YouTube space have said that. And if it's misinformation in terms of in terms of um, when R three quarter settler is in operation, isn't in operation. Uh, so when they when they when they get around to real use case, um, it's not a fact that the settler part of that will use XRP. So so someday when they get around to some real use case is and happen to settle, um it's not a fact that XRP will be the settlement digital asset. And so, listen, I could go in five gazillion directions uh, about that. I did find it interesting. I don't know how long ago it was, a few months ago. Um, one of the people from R3 was going to, I think, was being interviewed by someone from On The Chain, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I think it was someone from On The Chain. It was Jerry Hall, maybe, I, I think. And like one of the first questions, obviously, was, you know, XRP and the settler, the Corda settler. And he, the dude was like, we can talk about 500 gazillion things, but we can't talk about Ripple and XRP. I, I find that to be interesting. Is the lawsuit not over? Is the lawsuit not over? I'm, I don't know. Is it over? I found that to be an interesting statement. I don't know. Um, I do know that they have a uh, billion, bill, I believe a billion or two billion uh, XRP. I'm wondering, just wondering, maybe they're just using it to, um, to cash out sometimes when they need to cash out. I don't know. Maybe when it comes time for R3, to settle, I mean, when they come around to a real use case that um, I don't know, maybe they'll use the XRP they have, or maybe they'll get into the um, market maker and market taker ecosystem and and go buy some XRP. I don't know today's prices versus what they have in their. Warehouse now? I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting. So here's the thing. So I watched that video from Crypto Eddie. I watched the uh, SBI R3 something in Japan thing, right? And they said, that, yeah, that was just uh, an example 
you know, of a digital asset. You know, probably, you know, no different than when the, the WEF or the IMF or the United Nations or um, what's the other one? So the World Economic the World Banks. Um, uh, Executive Order 13772. Listen, on, when those things are put on a chart and they're put on a thing as a diagram, it's, listen, it's just an example. It's just an example. It doesn't mean that they're uh, doing anything. It's just, you know, that name came, the first thing came to their brain when they were putting together the presentation, um, you know when they were putting the slides together, you know, XRP just happened to be one of the things that came to the brain. XRP and a ripple was just, it popped up in their brain. Yeah, that's a good one. We'll put that down, you know, brand recognition, right? And um, I mean, you know, I don't know. I mean, maybe even the patent with Bank of America is, you know, maybe that's, you know, this, it's one of the things that just kind of came to the brain first, you know, came up, you know. And so they put them on the patent. So maybe that's probably, that could probably be it. But in any case, so here's the thing that I'm thinking. Um, listen, I think it's so cool that, you know, we have, we all have choices, right? Um, I think the, 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 the R3, platform has choices when it comes time to use a digital asset to settle and i love the fact that they have an opportunity to choose second best i think that's cool right i really do i think it's cool that when when it come, push comes to shove you know xrp you know that's not a done, that's not a foregone conclusion. Hey, we have an opportunity here at R3 <clears throat> when we in fact move into real world use case to choose second best. I mean, I think that's awesome. So, I mean, the guy could say, I mean, I mean, when he, he could say whatever he'd like to say from stage, I mean, why would he lie? Why would he lie? I mean, why would he, why would he? not state that it was just an example. I mean, I get it. I mean, I mean, Mr. Katow certainly is going to be cool with, you know, R3, you know, choosing to do another thing when it comes to settlement. I get it. So it's not a fact. Yep. Thousand percent. It was just an example. And I think that according to them, it was just an example. And I don't think it's odd at all that when someone from R3 is uh, being interviewed that the first statements out of their mouth is, hey, look, can't talk anything, Ripple or XRP. I just, you know, I think that's, you know, well, it's, that's probably pretty standard, but the first thing will come out was, you know, can't talk about the greatest digital asset ever created. And, you know, the, the behemoth, ginormous behemoth entity that is Ripple, I get it. I completely get it. And so, you know, I think it's, you know, listen, this is, that's one of the great things about where we are, right? You know, choices, choices. And if someone chooses, if someone chooses to, to use second best, I mean, you know, can't be mad at them. You just got to get that that's what it is. But meanwhile, <laughs> you know, I was going to title this video, meanwhile, in the news, R3 used XRP as an example. It was merely an example. Yeah, I forgot what I want to title this video. But in any case, let me share something uh, with you guys that I think is, you know, they aren't examples. They're actually real world use case. Real world use cases. And maybe that's why, you know, the people from R3 can't talk about Ripple and XRP because they understand that Ripple and XRP is actually in real world use case world. They're in the real world use case space. So maybe that's what it is, you know? Look, we're not we're in, we're still in the trial and great idea space and we can't talk about companies 
<laughs> that are in the real world use case space. So let me give you an example of a company that's in the real world use case uh, space. So this is a, a bank, it's called, excuse me, Krungs, Krungsri Bank in Thailand. I believe it to be the fifth largest bank in Thailand. I came across this from the awesome dude, XRP Darren, Darren Moore, because I am part of his Patreon group, proud member of his Patreon group. And he shared this in the Patreon. And I think he actually eventually shared it on Twitter, or at least a part of it on Twitter. So this fifth largest bank in Thailand happens to be part a member of the MUFG, the Mitsubishi something something FG, <laughs> a global financial group in Japan. So uh, let me tell you just a little bit about um, the bank, just, just a couple of things, and then I'm going to share with you something that I don't, I don't know. So here's one thing. Now, again, this is, this is a bank in the real world doing some real world things in, in their space. Cruisery posts net profit of $7 billion in the quarter one of 2020. I'm guessing that bot, that bot is a currency. Thailand, focusing on supporting customers, society, and economy as the beer cold impacts intensify. Look at that dude right there. Good looking dude. Good looking dude. Seven billion quarter one. Part of the MUFG consortium banks. I think they're, I think they're actually that this MUFG is uh, um, actually, you know, this is a subsidiary of that group. I'm not mistaken. So let me show you something else here. Forgive my uh, rant earlier. I just find that to be fascinating. Just an example. Just an example. So anyway, MUFG. Here they are right here. And uh, this is their, what, are, what did I want to share? Their brand. It's pretty cool. Here, your trust, your future, our commitment. M M U F G Japan, doing their thing. Happens to be, I'm fairly certain. Yeah, they are. 2.8 trillion in assets. 2.8 trillion. Our M U F M U F G brand promise you trust, your future, our commitment, your trust, your future, our commitment is a fresh expression of our corporate vision, mission, and values. It is built on over 300 and 60 years of experience and delivered through a global network spanning more than 50 countries and regions and our steadfast commitment to serve businesses and society by building long-term relationships. We strive every day to earn your trust and together focus on your future. Yeah. So cool. 360 years in business, $2.8 trillion in assets. And I found that I'm going over here over to xrprk.com. Shout out to Leonidas. Does some real, real good stuff. And I just wanted to see what the, what the, some of the partnerships, some of the banks, some of the, you know, the banks that are, you know, that are actually doing real world use case stuff, right? Actually doing the thing. Um, I found them right here um, on this list, top 100 banks and Ripple. Let me read this art. Let me read the top of this here. Shout out to XRPRK. This list is based on the 2019 S&P Global Market Intelligence Report of the largest of the 100 largest banks in the world. 100 largest in the world by total assets. This list links the top 100 banks by assets and Ripple. Currently, 38% of the world's top 100 banks have been linked to, re to have been linked to Ripple. Bear in mind, there are NDAs in place and banks might be connected to Ripple via other integrators. Top 100 bank, 38%, and he keeps this up to date. He's really on point of keeping this up to date. And so I just wanted to share uh, that uh, here's this MUFG bank again, Mitsubishi UFG, UFJ Financial Group, excuse me, Japan, two something trillion in assets. And it's a Ripple customer. So 
Yeah, so they won't be, they won't say, you know, the, you know, just an example of a thing that they're doing. They're out. Yeah, that's pretty cool. HSBC Holdings. Customer that says via the SABB, which I believe is the Saudi Arabian bank some way or another. I thought that to be pretty cool as well. Keep hearing a lot about HSBC, but you know, I get, look, MUFG, two trillion in assets, customer ripple, no example there. So there won't be any, you know, get up, get togethers and say that, that, that was just an example. So that's pretty cool, right? So let's see what this fifth largest bank in Thailand, the fifth largest bank in Thailand, part of this MUFG financial group. All right, let's see what they were thinking. I'm just gonna pull over to something that I thought was pretty cool. Let's see if they just doing this for example sake or not let's see let's see what i came across so so uh this is 354 page pdf from Krungri, part of the annual report it says here for cross-border remittance a blockchain based service we have significantly expanded our scope of payments on the RippleNet platform to other international banks, including MUFG in Japan. This also helps enhance our capability to be ready for commercial payments of inbound VAHT transactions from Crunchy and Lao PDR to Bangkok and outbound SGD, which I believe is Singapore dollars. Yeah, that is transaction from Bangkok, Bangkok to standard chartered bank in Singapore. But meanwhile, in the news, I mean that R3 and quarter settler with XRP was just an example. For cross-border remittance, I'm going to read this again. For cross-border remittance, a blockchain-based service, we have, sig we have significantly expanded. For cross-border remittance, a blockchain-based service, we have significantly expanded our scope of payments on the RippleNet platform to other international banks, including... MUFG in Japan with two point something trillion in assets. This also helps enhance our capability to be ready for commercial payments of inbound bot bat transactions from Krungri and Lao PDR to Bangkok and outpour Singapore dollar transactions from Bangkok to standard chartered bank in Singapore. Yeah. Meanwhile, in the news, R3 used XRP for the quarter seller as an example. Got it. Got it. All right. So listen, what else did I want to share with you guys today? So this is pretty, I love this thing here from XRP Arcade, I gotta tell you, MUFG customer, HSBC Holdings PLC, customer via SABB, very, very important. Don't sleep on this one. This is huge, 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 HSBC, huge. Bank of America, uh, RippleNet Committee via the Merrill Lynch, right? We know about the patent. Uh, what was another one here? Japan Post Bank, SBI Ripple Asia, SBI, uh, Ripple, not as, an, not as an example. Asia, the Sumi, Sumiti, Sumitomo, Sumitomo Missy Financial Group. <laughs> SBI Ripple Asia, not an example. Mizuhu Financial Group, 
SBI Ripple, SBI Ripple, not as an example, Asia. I just, I think that's pretty cool. Banco Santander in Spain, customer and an investor. Royal Bank of Canada, customer, not just as an example. UBS Bank, not just as a customer, not just as an example. I think that's pretty cool. Standard Chartered. Customer, Ripple customer, not just as an example. Yeah, 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 I get it. I get it. I really, really, really do get it. That is pretty cool, wouldn't you think? I would think that that is pretty cool stuff. XRPRK.com. Make sure you guys check this dude out. He does some really great stuff. This website is quite honestly, outstanding. It really, really is outstanding. So to sum some stuff up, to summarize, if you will, I love the fact that R3 uh, has some choices, right? We all love choices. And that they have an opportunity to choose second best. I get it. I really, really do. When they move from the trial space and move into the real world use case space, they have some options. And if they choose to use something other than XRP, you know, I think it's great that they get the opportunity to choose second best when it comes to settlement. So I really do, I'm excited for them that they get that chance. I really, really am. All right, guys, listen, I am going to wrap up this video like I do all of my videos and remind you of this. Old money doesn't want you to win. They don't want us to win. They would rather us remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. They don't want us to play in the same playground that they play in where we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys. The digital asset space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. Are you participating or are you standing on the sidelines? Here's what I do know, that the battle for you has already been fought and the victory is yours. Go get it. I'll talk to you soon, guys. See ya. Bye.